The 55,000 square mile Blue Mountain Physiographic Province lies in northeastern Oregon with a small portion projecting into southeast Washington and west central Idaho. From the Ochoco Mountains at 6,000 feet, the landscape rises eastward to the Wallawa Mountains. The province is subdivided into various mountain ranges, the Oakhorn, Greenhorn, Strawberry, Aldrich, Wallawa, and the Seven Devils. To the west of the Blue Mountains are the Baker Basin and the Grand Ronde Basin. The glaciated peaks of the Wallawa rise over 9,000 feet. The longest river is the John Day River flowing a distance of 284 miles. The Snake River defines the eastern border of the province and is the chief tributary of the Columbia River. The Blue Mountains are divided into four distinct terrains, Old Ferry, Izzy, Baker, and Wallawa. The word terrain applies to suites of similar rocks separated by faults and transported from their place of origin. The terrains were first defined and delineated by Howard Brooks, William Dickinson, Tom Thayer, and Tracy Vallier. Each of the Blue Mountain terrains, the Baker, the Wallawa, the Izzy, and the Olds Ferry are the foundations of, of the Blue Mountains. The terrains represent separate marine settings of back-to-back -back volcanic island arcs. The terrains originated well south of their present latitude and were transported during the late Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras. Each terrain offers unique fossils, sediments, and volcanic rocks that allow geologists to study the earliest beginning of the state. Originally, it was thought that there was an implied divergence zone separating the Wallawa and Baker terrains. The current thinking regarding the sequencing of terrains suggests that from Middle to Late Triassic, the Wallawa and Olds Ferry were adjacent to North America. The Baker terrain separated the two and was an ocean trench subduction complex with an accretionary, accretionary wedge. Voluminous sediments from the Izzy terrain were deposited in the seaway between the Baker and Olds Ferry Island arcs. By late Triassic, the Wallawa merged with Olds Ferry and the amalgam of all terrains were intruded by granitic plutons and welded onto the continent. Tracy Vallier in 1996 and with others in 2016 stated that the sequencing of the terrain suggests a major reorientation of the subducting slab, which shifted from west dipping during the Triassic to east dipping in the Jurassic. The Blue Mountains were pinnacontemporaneous with the, with the uh, Sonoma orogeny. The Sonoma orogeny was a period of mountain building in western North America. The orogeny is generally thought to have occurred during the Permian Triassic. The Sonoma orogeny was one of, the, of a sequence of accretionary events along the Cordilleran margin, possibly caused by the closure of the basin between the island arc of Sonoma and the North American continent. Evidence of this event has been reported throughout western North America but most distinctly in Northwest Nevada. There are a number of formations associated with each of the terrains. A geologic formation, or simply formation, is a body of rock having a consistent set of physical characteristics or lithologies that distinguishes it from adjacent bodies of rock and which occupies a particular position in the layers of rock exposed in the geographical region, the stratigraphic column. A formation must be large enough that it can be mapped at the surface or traced in the subsurface. Formations are otherwise not defined by the thickness of the rock strata, which can vary widely. They may consist of a single lithology, rock type, or of alternating beds of two or more lithologies, 
or even a heterogeneous mixture of lithologies, so long as this distinguishes them from adjacent bodies of rock. It was once thought that the grindstone was an independent terrain and was the oldest and smallest of Oregon's northeastern terrains. But today, geologists no longer regard the grindstone as an independent terrain, but consider it to be part of the much larger Baker assemblage, the accretionary wedge complex formed at a subduction complex. The grindstone is composed of early Paleozoic limestone slabs called osteoliths that became detached from shallow ocean shells or volcanic knolls to slide downslope and mix with late Permian and Triassic rocks in the Izzy Basin. Close to the border between Cook and Horny counties lies a 100 foot thickness of Devonian limestone, the oldest rock in Oregon that yields brachiopods, corals, and microfossil conodonts. Overlying this unnamed limestone lies 1,000 feet of Mississippian limestone, mudstone, sandstone, and chertz of the Coffee Creek Formation, and has shallow water tropical corals and brachiopods. Disconformably overlying the Coffee Creek Formation is the spotted bridge non-marine sandstone having fossil ferns and scaled trees. Finally, the Coyote Bluff limestone disconformably overlies the Coffee Creek Formation and contains shallow water fus fusilinids, corals, and radiolaria. The Baker terrain stretches across most of northeastern Oregon. This terrain is a chaotic mixture of deep ocean sediments and volcanic rocks that have been metamorphosed folded and intruded by plutons. The terrain represents a subduction zone and mid-ocean basin. As rocks of the Baker terrain were overridden by the oncoming Folds, Olds Ferry, they were tightly compressed into an accretionary wedge. The formations of terrain are the Permian Mountain Complex that crops out southeast of John Day and is a nearly complete ophiolite suite. Serpentine is found in this area, marking the fault of the descending plate. The Permian-Triassic Burnt River Schist exposed in Burnt River Canyon in Baker County is a 20,000 foot thick sequence of greenstones, schists, limestone, quartzites, and quartz-rich shales. In the vicinity of Baker City and Sumter, the Permian to early Jurassic Elkhorn Ridge argillite is represented by thick layers of altered mudstones with thin layers of volcanic ash, chert, and limestone. The Wallawa is the northernmost terrain of the Blue Mountain province. Underlying the Wallawa Mountains in Oregon is the Seven Devils Range. Isolated exposures are, occur in Washington. And continuous sections can be seen for over 100 miles in the Snake River Canyon. The metamorphic rock greenstone in the foreground and along the road cut across the Snake River. The Wallawa terrain is composed of a diversity of Permian to Jurassic volcanic and sedimentary rocks of the Seven Devils volcanic group, the Clover Creek greenstone, the Martin Ridge, and the Herwall formations. The oldest, the Seven Devils group, correlate with the Clover Creek Greenstone, a 4,000 foot thick sequence in northern Baker County that contains cool water boreal Permian brachiopods in its lowest interval. The Martin Bridge Formation is a carbonate platform and the Hural Formation contains deep water turbidites. Fossil mollusks, coral, and marine reptiles of these two formations are rem remarkably similar to fauna of the Western Pacific, Central Europe, and the Himalayas, reflecting the exotic nature of the Wallawa terrain. Structures along the eastern flank of the Wallawa Mountains shows Wallawa batholith under the Wallawa Mountains, thrust faults up onto the mountains from the east, and the Seven Devils volcanic group of Orangelia in the subsurface to the east. 
The Seven Devils is overlain by Miocene volcanics. Originally identified as the Izzy Terrain, it is now regarded as an overlap sequence covering the older rocks of the Wallawa, Baker, and Olds Ferry terrains. The Izzy is a continuous 12 mile thick succession of Triassic and Jurassic sequence of rocks, Ammonites and Radiolaria inhabiting a Tethian tropical marine environment during the late Triassic were supplemented by invertebrates of a boreal environment by the Middle Jurassic, evidence that the terrain had moved from a warmer to cooler latitudes. The rocks are exposed in limited aerial extent from Supley and Izzy eastward to John Day in Lyre. An in Lyre is older rocks exposed and surrounded by younger rocks in an erosional window. The sedimentary depositional environment ranged from shallow water marine shelf in Triassic to sandy nearshore and shallow water limestone reefs in the Jurassic. Large batholiths in place during the late Paleozoic and Triassic of the Wallawa and Baker terrains and Middle Triassic to Early Jurassic of the Old Ferry terrain. The largest in the state, 324 square miles makes up the core of the Wallawa Mountains. Eagle Cap, rising 9,595 feet above the Sunrise Lake Basin in the Wallawa Mountains, is composed of 140 million year old granitic rock. The Olympic Wallawa and Klamath Blue Mountain liniments are enormous structural features that run for hundreds of miles. Although poorly understood, they are thought to be mega shears or strike slip faults above some type of boundary structure buried deep in the crust. Liniments are expressed along interconnected faults, folds, and grobbins, or by more sub, sub, subtle features such as straight alignment of streams, valleys, or volcanoes. This image is the tertiary stratigraphy of the Blue Mountain Physiographic Province. Only two unnamed Paleocene deposits are found in the province, one containing a flora at Denming Springs and freshwater diatoms at Embler. Climate during the Eocene was tropical to subtropical, and acidic and basaltic lavas from scattered volcanic cores throughout the western Blue Mountains, along with lahars, multicolored paleosols, and tufaceous sediments, make up the blend of the Clarno Formation. This is an Eocene palm leaf, Sabalites, from the Clarno Formation. Sabalites palm fronds measure over two feet in length. The Eastern Oregon climate 54 to 40 million years ago during the Eocene Clarno deposition was subtropical to tropical. It was a period of spectacular and acidic volcanism that produced ash and laharas that buried a variety of plants, avocados, cinnamon, palm, and bananas. And animal remains such as rhinoceros, brontotheres, and crocodiles were, were well preserved. The John Day formations spanning the late Eocene to early Miocene are rhyolitic lavas that covered 35,000 square miles in Jefferson, Crook, Wheeler, and Grant counties with incandescent gas charged clouds of ash which cooled as distinctive ignimbrites. Changes in the John Day formation are reflected by the nature and color of the sediments and paleosols. Highly oxidized deep red clay stones of the Big Basin member, the pea green turtle cove tufaceous clay stone, and the youngest cream to buff colored Kimberly and Haystack member tufts and conglomerates. The volcanic sources for the Kalarno and John Day formations have been identified. The oldest, 43.8 to 36 million years ago, is the wildcat caldera in the Ochoco Mountains sourced the Clarno Formation. 
the Crooked River Caldera, 29 million years ago near Primeville, sourced the southern and western facies of the John Day Formation, and the youngest, 28 million years ago, the Tower Mountain near Ukiah sourced the eastern facies of the John Day Formation. The Crooked River Caldera is the largest, 18 by 25 miles in diameter. The Crooked River Caldera was bimodal, producing both basalts and rhyolitic lavas. The other two were rhyolitic. Following the eruption and collapse of the Crooked River Caldera, rhyolitic lava flows, domes, and dikes from the Powell Buttes, Gary Butte, Gray Buttes, Barnes Butte, and Ochoco Reservoir centers were in place along the rim of the structure. During the Miocene, from 17 to 6 million years ago, multiple flows of Columbia River basalts poured westward from cracks and fissures known as dike swarms in the Blue Mountains and in the adjacent Washington and Idaho. The two major dike swarms were the source for all the layered basalts in the Blue Mountains region. The Chief Joseph Dyke Swarm, which produced the Imnaha Basalts, and the Monument Dyke Swarm, which produced the Pitcher Gorge Basalts. The sheer breadth and volume of the Columbia River Basalts tend to overshadow middle to late Miocene and acidic volcanics elsewhere in the province. The characteristic stiff, slow-moving andesites produced are a type that typically accompany very explosive volcanoes, often producing ignimbrites, welded ash flows that are composed of broken glass shards as found in the rattlesnake tuff. By middle to late Miocene, the shoreline of the Pacific had re retreated further westward, and the rising Cascades brought increasingly drier temperate climates to eastern Oregon. The Mescal, Rattlesnake, Juntara, and Druzy Formation are known for their vertebrate assemblages that suggest an open woodland and savanna. Pliocene sediments in Oregon are extremely rare and outcrop near Baker. Glaciation impacted eastern Oregon during the Pleistocene, begin, beginning about 2 million years ago and ending about 11,000 years ago. This period was marked by periods of glaciation that lasted between 150 to 200,000 years each. Continental glaciers covered Canada and pushed into Washington, Idaho, and Montana. With the exception of the Ochoco Mountains, all the ranges in the Blue Mountains display the unmistakable signs of alpine glaciation, such as striations on bedrock, layers of till, moraines, erites, tors, U-shaped valleys, amphitheater cirques, and strings of lakes. In this southward-looking view, the city of Joseph lies on the irregular glacial outwash plain. Pinned in by glacial moraines, Wallawa Lake is in the upper left, and Mount Bonneville is towards the back. An erosional remnant of volcanic ash flow tufts of the Clarno and John Day formations, Stein's Pillar, stands 350 feet tall. Oxidizing iron from the volcanics has stained the surface yellow-brown. Near the headquarters of John Day Fossil Beds National Monument at Pitcher Gorge, Sheep Rock stands tall and majestic. Pitcher Gorge received its name because of the Indian pictographs on the canyon walls. The cap of sheep rock is Columbia River basalts overlying green and buff-colored tufts of the middle and upper John Day formations. North of the main park headquarters are good examples of the middle John Day green turtle cove member. At the top is the Pitcher Gorge ignimbrite. The rugged terrain of Hell's Canyon is carved from the remnants of Triassic rock and Permian volcanic islands. 
I leave you with this stunning view of Smith Rock carved by the Crooked River into vertical pillars and precipitous cliffs. Smith Rock lies near the west rim of Crooked River Caldera. The monolith Smith Rock is a rhyolitic dome. The ancestral Crooked River cuts its way down through the tan, green, and red John Day formation to shape the vertical walls of Smith Rock.